Hey everyone, I wanted to fill you in on a new project that I just completed that seems to be working pretty well for me right now. I've been brewing on the rubber brew that you see behind me over here for some time and I've been experimenting with a spunding valve, spunding valve, I don't know how you properly say it, and connecting to a corny keg and cutting the dip tube on the liquid outside and that's the liquid outside two inches shorter and I've been having a lot of trube and sucking up and when I go to filter it it's really not the best it, it um, the dip tube has to be about three inches from the bottom and I leave a lot behind in a five gallon corny keg so I ended up making something that you see behind me this is one and a half inch rigid foam that I made into a cube that if you look let me move this has my spooning valve on top of something new inside is hold on for one second my daughter's asking me a question what what sweetheart I want fruit roll -ups. we don't have fruit roll-ups uh, no you can't have something else can you go upstairs and watch your little brother for two minutes Thank you. Oh boy. Two minutes to make a video and she's going crazy. So I made this out of rigid foam. As you can see, it interconnects with these um, dovetails that I cut in. And inside, let me see if I get this off for you. Hold on. This one side is, is made into two pieces, as you can see. Inside is a fermentosaurus that I purchased off of a gentleman that didn't want it. I ended up using my Johnson controller, Johnson Controls controller, uh, A419, and a plug-in heater that, if you can see behind there, maybe if I can get that in there, it actually plugs in with this cord that I have. It's a firm wrap, pretty much. Plugged it in, and it sits at around 40, uh, 72 degrees right now. I started around 68. It's been sitting around 70. And the th right behind here in the foam is the thermocoupler, the uh, temperature probe. So I made this so I could take it apart and store it. I don't want to have this huge box sitting here at all times. So... I took the dimensions of the Furminator, and it's 15 by 15 as a footprint, but tall to the top of the cap, well, to the bottom of the cap, where the, where the bottom of the um, rigid foam would be, is around 31 and a half, 33 inches. I have to double make sure, but I went ahead and cut everything on my local $24 for the whole sheet, a 4 by 8 sheet, and I cut all four sides, a bottom, a top, and a nifty little box that I line with the um, HVAC tape to go on top to keep the heat in. So this is basically only for heating up and to finishing out for di diacetyl rest. So speaking of diacetyl rest, um, this guy right here looks pretty good. This is my, uh, uh, what exactly is this? My cream ale, my Liberty cream ale from Midwest Supplies. It, pretty good. Came out, tasting very nice, about two pounds of flaked corn. The problem that I have is, when you smell it, it smells like sulfur. I fermented it in the corny keg that you see below and with um, US05 and I did not, I kept my cellar down here is about 64 degrees at all times and it did not raise past 68 degrees especially when this when it was coming to its final and when you're fermenting under pressure you want you have to finish higher temperature with higher pressure so that way the diacetyl rest can take place 
and you get rid of all of the unwanted um, smells and tastes and weird things that the yeast would normally push off if it wasn't under pressure. But it is under pressure, and this one, this is a amber ale slash Irish red ale. I call it an amber ale because it didn't look too amber, uh, too red ale. But it's around 24, two, about two bars of, P of pressure. And if you look, it's, it's, eh, it's not really uh, red. Um, it was a kit, it's extract. I picked it up for about 20 bucks for extract brewing. I usually buy all my kits. If you look right down here, this is all extract. Below is all, all grain. And then I have upstairs another three or four big beer all grains that are barley wine, Russian Imperial Stout, um, a triple, something else. So I usually pick them up in bulk and I let them wait until I go to use them. And they seem to do me well you know, especially with the extract, I wanted this to be a fairly quick turnaround. And pressurizing a fermentosaurus is definitely a quick turnaround. But you have to, have to ramp up the temperature. So right now I'm set at 72 and it's sitting there pretty nice. I'm going to hit menu. SP pops up. Hit it again. Set for 71. I'm going to go up one more degree to 72 and hit okay now the light came on that's telling me that it's providing power to my ferment wrap that's inside that's going to heat this up to about 73 degrees every day i bring it up after about the first three days i let it free rise so it's been about 70 to 71 degrees since last saturday and today is wednesday so it's stopping its fermentation right now I need to bump up temperature one degree every 12 hours if not two degrees every 24 hours so if I can't get down here during the middle of the day which I'm at work but in the afternoon I come home I bump it up one degree before I go to bed bump it up another degree and by the time I wake up I will then bump it up a degree and then when I get home bump it up another degree until it hits about seven days to 10 days and it's sitting there at around 75 to 80 degrees and that will give me a very nice diacetyl rest and cause all those off flavors to come right out of this nice little spunding valve spunding valve i picked this whole valve up from more beer it came with this horrendous little you know pressure gauge and it's only up to 15 psi and it got stuck as you can see it's not reading correct so i went online i picked up a liquid filled gauge i also took this spooning valve that they that they had on here this little i don't know brass spooning valve for an extra couple like 20 30 dollars I took all the brass fittings that were currently on here, all the way up, I put a new spooning valve on, a pressure relief valve, and I have a liquid filled PSI gauge. It's pretty much exact. I filled off of my CO2 tank, you see right here, with two bar, I plugged in my spooning valve, it was at 25 PSI. Two bars, 24 point something or other 25 point something or other um and works great the other one completely off you know you can make one so much cheaper so right now i'm going to put everything back together put the sides back on i can collapse this whole thing down into a stack of one and a half inch rigid foam and store it until my next brew day i could put my 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 keg inside there and it'll have enough room to uh, just cover it with um, another piece of foam that I have that I have left over. I have no problem with this whatsoever. It's it's holding temperature. It's doing well. I don't have to wrap a blanket around it. Um, the next step is maybe getting a kegerator, but I don't have 300 to 400 bucks or looking for one online. Or, as you can see, in my room down here, 
enough room to put a kegerator with the eherms, the robo brew, all the fermenting wine, all the extra wine, all the Christmas stuff, all the cake decorating stuff, all the every <laughs> everything down here. I have no room to put a kegerator so I could do a fermentation chamber. Wish I did, but for right now, to keep it at 64 degrees and above for ales, I'm gonna have a nice insulated chamber. I'm gonna use my ferment wrap to raise it for diacetyl rest. Spooning valve for fermenting hot. Right now it's USO5 with a Irish red ale that I'm, you know, got from Midwest Supplies for 20 bucks. Can't go wrong. I dumped in the two two things of corn sugar that it came with. And I got six gallons at the same OG that the five gallons would be without it. So extra gallon of beer I can from I can uh, put it in a gallon uh, carboy try it out see what's going on but you have to do a diacetyl rest you have to raise the temperature especially if it's under pressure otherwise it's it was kind of embarrassing at my uh, brew meeting that I go to every month and the cream ale smelt like farts it smelled like sulfur it was quite embarrassing tasted amazing smelled like someone passed gas so use this information as you will, and I hope everything goes well.